how to make a skeleton puppet. To the puppet nerds of the world, this may sound absurd, but this is the place you need to be. We'll do an interview and then we'll stitch and glue all of the dolls will make it shake. If you wanna be in the know and to play like a pro, subscribe to Kutinger Puppets. Do you know why skeletons are so calm? Because nothing gets under their skin. Ah! Welcome back puppet nerds, Adam Krutinger here, and today we're gonna turn a skeleton decoration into a mechanized moving puppet. Now you can get a plastic skeleton like this from pretty much anywhere this time of year. You can get it at most department stores, Halloween stores, you could even go to Party City. Go back to Party City where you belong. But the one that I'm using today, I got on Amazon, and the link is down in the description if you wanna use the exact same one. Regardless, any skeleton you get, just make sure that it has a moving mouth. Most places call it an articulating mouth. And you can do pretty much any size. I know they sell some pretty big life-size ones too, but I really love the size of this Amazon one. It's perfect for film work. Now beyond the skeleton, there's only a few things you're going to need. I'm gonna use some fishing line, a spring, and some other odds and ends that I have knocking around my shop. And I'll be sure to mention any tips or tricks I'm using along the way. But with that said, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is open this packaging. Let's see what we've got. Look at that mouth moving. Okay, now that I have this out of the bag, let's take a closer look. So this jaw here is hinged. It has a nice articulating jaw. Let's see how the hinge actually is though. Okay. So it's these little plastic sprues that they're using as the hinge. See, I would have thought it would have been a little uh, screw or something but this is totally fine. And this should be strong enough. I shouldn't have to change this out. Now, before we put this back in, let's see what else we're working with. I'm surprised to see that this spine is solid cast. I was hoping it was hollow because I thought it would be really easy to just drill a hole in the bottom and drill a hole in the top and thread the string through. But it looks like we're gonna have to do a little bit more work. It looks like I'm gonna have to remove these shoulder joints because this shoulder can only pretty much move in this direction. And I want to make it a full articulating arm. So I'm just gonna pop these out. Yeah, that peg's gonna have to go. I think I'm just gonna put a little rope joint in there. This elbow I think is fine. I think it'll make it kind of funny, uh, leaving the elbow there. The wrist is fine, and I'm just gonna have to attach some arm rods to this hand. Going down, I think I'm definitely gonna leave the legs, I'll leave the knees, and the feet are fine too. It's interesting how the uh, ankle is the only spot where they decided to use a screw. So that's kind of interesting because these are all plastic little nubs. But all right, let me pull off this other arm. <clears throat> so looking at this closer, I actually want to do more than just a moving mouth now. I want the head to be able to turn and for it to be able to nod. But that's going to make this a bit more complex. So I'm going to use a couple scraps that I found here. I found this little piece of wood in my shop knocking around. It is about an inch and a half wide by about an inch and a quarter long. And it has a height of about one inch. I might have to do a little bit of shaping on it, but it might work well for this head. That'll give me something to screw into because right now this head is hollow. And I also found this little Delrin ball. I have a whole box of these that I found on Amazon. I'll leave a link below, but you definitely don't have to use this. It could easily just be like a wooden bead or something like that. I'm gonna drill a hole through this and a hole through this and have a piece of bungee cord going through so that this whole neck can articulate. So let me start by taking off this head. Now I'm gonna use two screws to secure that wood in the head so it doesn't rattle around.
Here I'm just drilling two little holes into the jaw so I can thread a fishing line through it. Now you could use a spring like this. This is a spring that I got at a local hardware store. This one's about an inch long and about a quarter of an inch wide. But today I'm not gonna use this. Today I wanna use this spring. This is the same spring that I used in a couple of my videos. I think I first showed it in my chat about mechanisms at the end of my eye blink video. There's a link to that right here. But again, I also use the same wire for my floating eyebrows video that you can also see right here on this channel. And I have a link to this down in the description. But I'm gonna cut off a little piece of it like this. Bend a little piece like that. That way I have these little loops that I can thread the string through. And I have the string going both ways because one is gonna pull down on the mouth to open it and the other one's gonna pull up on the mouth to keep it closed. Now let me see how high up I wanna tie this. Looks like it's about two and a half inches long. So let me tie this off. Okay, if you can see I have that spring tied to the bottom of the jaw. Now I'm gonna loop a string through this side to tie it to the top of the head. So now I'm gonna thread that string through this big hole in the top of the mouth and out those two little holes that I just drilled on the top of the head. Now I'm gonna put a little hole right here, uh, make sure that it doesn't go through this bungee, and that's where I'm gonna feed this thread through so it goes to the back of the spine. And I'm gonna drill it at an angle. And now we have our moving mouth, just like that. Hey! but I can't move my head. Oh, that's right. Next, we're gonna do the head articulation control. Okay, for the control rod, I'm gonna use this nylon rod. These are typically much longer. I just cut it down to be to size. These are the kind of poles that people put in their lawn for like snow plows. They usually come in orange, but I found some black ones. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole into this spine and glue it in just like that. Okay, let me get some epoxy to put that in. So that looks pretty good. I think it's just a little bit long. So let me chop it down a little. That's much better. So next I'm gonna add this little piece here. This is a piece of Delrin. It's about a half an inch wide and about an inch long. The only reason this is pre-done is this was just kind of lying around my shop. I must have made it when I was testing out a different mechanism, but I think it'll work perfect for this. Now I'm gonna drill a hole in this here and drill a hole this way so that this thing can slide up and down on that rod. And the control lever will go in the other hole. Okay, that should do well. And for the other hole, I'm gonna use this eighth inch rod, so let me drill that hole too. And there it is, it's perfect. It's got the hole in the side and the hole in the top. Next, I have this piece of wood that I'm gonna use as the handle. It's about three quarters of an inch wide and about five inches long. Now I have to drill a hole in here to put into that rod. Now that is perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is take this piece and carefully thread it onto this rod. So this is what I'm gonna use to control the head movement. So now I have to just epoxy this on here so I have a nice little handle. All right, that's all cured. Now it looks ready to go. Right now this thing slides around, but once that rod is on it, it will stay pretty still and control the head. So now I have to put a connector at the head. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and today I ended up deciding to try out these eyelets. What I'm gonna do is put these right into the back of the head here into the wood that we put in there earlier and then attach my rod through there down to my controller. So just like that. Now this is some eighth inch rod that I'm gonna use to attach these eyelets down to my trigger right here. Okay, first thing I gotta do is give this a bend. So let me slide this in right here.
Now, just to make sure these don't slide off, I'm gonna put some Dura collars on. There we go, let's see how this works now. Pretty good. Now look at that head movement, isn't that nice? Get a lot of control side to side, up and down. It's a whole ball joint and it works really well. Now I wanna get into making the trigger to control the mouth. Now I'm gonna come up with a nice trigger shape that I want. Something comfy for the hand. Okay, now I'm gonna cut it out of PVC. But first I wanna flatten this. So I cut a slice off and then put a little sled in it. Now I'm gonna heat it up. Now I don't like to cut the string off just in case I ever have to rewire this. So I'm just gonna wrap it around this and then tape it down so it doesn't dance around on me. And just like that, we have a moving mouth now too. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Next, I want to attach these arms back on. And what I'm gonna do is use a string to connect these. So I'm gonna cut these pegs off and drill a hole right where it was. There are some arms, now they can really move around nicely. Next, let's attach some arm rods. Okay, I'm actually gonna take these arms apart a little bit more to get some more flexibility in here. First, let me take apart the elbows. There's this little plastic pin in here, and I'm gonna actually reuse this. So I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna put a string on the wrists too. So let me cut this off. Next, I'm gonna add arm rods. Click right here if you wanna see a video on how to make your own custom arm rods just like this. I already have a dedicated video on it. Now this skeleton, now typically I try to embed the arm rods inside of the hand, but these hands are so thin, it's about the same width as this rod, so that's not gonna work. But luckily, it already came with a hole in the hands right here. And if the skeleton you have doesn't have that hole, feel free to just drill it in. So for today, I'm just gonna use some bolts and attach it that way. And there we go, there's the hands. Now lastly, before we finish, I want to do a little bit of touch-ups on some of these additions with some white and black paint. Bonjour! Thanks for having me today! Hey, do you know why skeletons don't like spicy food? Because they don't have the stomach for it! <laughs> do you know who won the skeleton beauty contest? Nobody! Get it? Nobody? Ha 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 That was a knee slapper. Luckily, I still have knees. Now I'm gonna give you a closer look at how he works. Now before we get into that, one thing that's really nice about this one from Amazon is that it is full bodied, which is great for walk around work, but if you're doing this for a video, these legs are just kind of clunky and get in the way. So here's a nice feature. You can actually just pop these legs off. Just like that. And just like that. And now you have a real nice little puppet that's much easier to maneuver and to handle. Speaking of handle, let's get a closer look. This is how the final handle turned out. You can notice I changed the trigger just a little bit to make it a little bit easier for me to hold. 
but here's how I do it. I pretty much hold the entire rod with just these three fingers right here. This finger becomes the trigger that controls the mouth, and I can move the head side to side by sliding this with my thumb. And I can make the character look up by pulling down like this, and I can make it look down by pushing up. And I can also do that all in one motion, just like this, since it slides on that rod. Now just to show you those motions again, that's the moving of the mouth and the head going up and down, side to side, all around, just by doing those exact same motions. Anyway, that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this build. And if you make your own skeleton puppet, I would love to see it. Be sure to post it on Instagram and tag me. And if you want to learn some skills on how to do puppetry, click the link right here if you want to learn skills on how to puppeteer. I made a whole video dedicated to the basics of learning puppetry. And if you want to learn more about making puppets, I have hundreds of videos right here on this channel. And you can also check out puppetnerd.com for all sorts of fun projects and updates. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll see you next time.